Hey guys and welcome to another Schematics interview. This time we want to talk about abandoned ship and for that we invited Gary. How are you? Very good, thank you. A bit tired. Ah, uh, I know that feeling. <laughs> Uh, could you please introduce yourself real quick for the guys out there who may not know who you are? Yeah, so uh, my name is Gary Birchall and I am the team lead um, on a game called Abandoned Ship, which is being made up by an indie developer called Fireblade Software. So with our first question here, we're going to start kind of informal. Uh, what's your gaming background and history? I vaguely remember my big brother having a Spectrum. I think I started getting magazines like Mean Machines and things like that before um, I even got my first console, which was a Mega Drive. And yeah, kind of went from there, really. Had consoles, like uh, I think I got Super NES as well. And then my friend got a PC and I was like, wow, what's this? You know, it had Doom 2 on it and Theme Park and it absolutely blew my mind. So I kind of made the transition over to PC gaming. And um, although I still dabble in consoles, I kind of never looked back, really. So Abandoned Ship is Fireblade's first game. What are your past experiences? In game development? So when I left university, I got a job as a tester in a developer down in Portsmouth in the UK. And I ended up staying there for 13 years. And I ended up leaving there as an executive producer. Um, so the last project I did there was um, the Assassin's Creed Chronicles trilogy. When I got into the industry, I kind of wanted to either do the big AAA thing or do my own thing. And back when I got into the industry, the indie scene didn't really exist. I've only been over the last, I guess, five, six years. It's become an option. And I decided just to stay there and been happy doing what I was doing. But I thought, you know what, let's just um, throw everything up in the air, see where it lands and give this a shot. And here we are. So recently, uh, Abandoned Ship released into Early Access, and I'm curious, why did you decide to release the game into Early Access versus a more traditional development? When I started the company, over time, a few people from where I worked previously ended up joining through. Um, I think they were kind of in a similar position to me, where they'd been at the company for a long time and wanted a change. So they ended up coming on board with me. And I think the company we worked for previously was a work for hire developer. So we were always making other people's games. And sometimes working with publishers was absolutely lovely. And other times it was very difficult working with them. So I, when we started this, we really wanted to do it ourselves. So the development of Abandoned Ship was progressing and it started to get more and more traction. We had quite a lot of publishers ask like, do you want to sign up with us? Really, we kind of wanted to do this ourselves. You know, we're a small team. We don't have, you know, financial muscle behind us in terms of marketing and things like that. So we're doing it all ourselves. Part of that for us was kind of really involving the community and help develop the game in that way. Because, you know, I think we've been out for a couple of days now and already there's been some great feedback. Um, you know, most of it's aligned with where we want to take the game, which is great. But, you know, there's still some stuff that... I look at and go, oh, it's, you know, it's great these guys are, uh, are passionate about these particular things because then we can focus on those. So um, it's been a good fit for us. So what inspired the game? And second question, basically, what inspired the art style of the game? The idea I had was a lot smaller in scope. I think one of my favorite games of all time is FTL. When I first left, I was kind of like, well, I, you know what, I, I want to make something that's a bit like that in terms of the crew management. And I was looking at kind of if anything else was out there like that and there wasn't. And I was like, this idea of kind of FTO pirates, that's a lovely idea. And I don't understand why anybody else hasn't made it yet. It started off as that quite small scale. And then I managed to get a bit of funding from the UK government. And that kind of opened the door to us making it a bit larger scale because originally it was just going to be I, I wasn't even sure what the art style was and I've always um, so it came to the art style it was a problem I was trying to work out you know people are very visual and there's a lot of stuff out there constantly grabbing your attention and, and a good way to to get people to notice you is to have a unique art style but I was struggling with you know what that would be uh, it was one Christmas day I was around my in-laws And they have this painting in their living room, which is a kind of, um, a, you know, a, a naval oil painting. And I love that style. And I always find myself when I'm around there kind of switching off and just staring at that painting because it's beautiful. On that Christmas, I was there looking at it, literally thinking to myself, yeah, what could the art style be? For... <laughs> and it, it was just like clang, you know, anvil crashing on me. 
and it was staring me in the face. I wanted to go for kind of not a jaunty Pirates of the Caribbean style because mm. the game has permadeath and it's you know surviving on the edge and and that didn't marry up for me with army hearties so i wanted it to be more master and commander than mm. say pirates of the caribbean and those naval oil paintings are kind of that that's what they scream um and there is you know it's, it's a classic for a reason they're very beautiful so yeah it felt like a, a fantastic fit so I'm curious, uh, is the water procedural or pre-animated? So it is procedural. The default view is the ships are going in the same direction. Um, whereas if you turned the ship around, then you'd see, particularly in storm where the waves are more pronounced, that it is procedural. The most obvious is where it's stormy because there's more pronounced waves. Talking about storms, um, what role does the environment play in combat? environmental modifiers in the game have to have a gameplay impact if it's lightning if it strikes yours or the enemy ship then it will start a fire if it's raining then it will put out fires over time otherwise fires sort of will spread if, if left to their own devices and a lot of ship weapons can be flame based so you know if you've kitted yourself out with loads of flaming weapons which can be a really effective strategy but then you go into a map where it's raining that's where you're kind of like ah right okay this is going to inform my decision making process about you know how aggressively i go into combat things like that uh, the flip side of course is if the enemy generated has a load of flaming weapons and it's raining then you're kind of like okay cool i'll be able to this i'm not going to take a huge amount of damage on this one there's uh so in stormy waters there are tidal waves when they come in they hit both ships and will knock everybody to the deck if there's fires it will wipe the fires out for you uh, there's a mechanic in the game called brace for impact and key moments like that and ramming and certain weapons cause this uh, you have this brace test. If you fail the brace test, then there's a chance that uh, someone from your crew will be knocked into the water. Um, and when they're man overboard, you have to winch them in. There's fog that affects your visibility. So um, depending on what level crow's nest you have and the distance you are from the enemy, you won't be able to see some of their stats like the crew or the uh, ship sections. Uh, we've got some other modifiers as well. Uh, unique like a map with volcanoes so if you fight in there then occasionally there'll be huge volcanic rocks that come crashing down on you there's a map with icebergs um, which will constantly crash into and chip away at your whole health unless you've got um, this thing called an icebreaker that will kind of mm -hmm. uh, protect your ship from the front um, but that will still even with that if you're changing distance a lot you still might get hit from the side in those maps if you're somebody that likes to get in close and board you've got to kind of make that decision of I know I'm going to take some hits um, we're trying to give the player these sorts of decisions right now this thing's thrown into mix how's that going to affect my playstyle? what are the differences between the difficulty levels so at the moment they only inform how much supplies and money you gain from the various events so provide a modifier for that that can have quite a wide ranging effect because that could affect you know how you're repairing and um yeah when you're upgrading and things like that um there's probably more things i'd want to plug into that as we go through our early access so i wonder what's the current status on the ai yeah, I mean, it's it's constantly going to be improved and balanced throughout early access. A couple of the biggest missing features that the AI currently don't do is ram you and board you on their own from their ship. Mm -hmm. um, we have these squid men that will dive into the water and come across and board you, um, but we'll expand the AI so that the ship, the enemy ship, is doing that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Aside from that, it's just a lot of tweaking. I think the AI can be a bit too aggressive in terms of jumping onto things that happen. Uh, so an example is if you damage a section into the yellow, they'll leap on that immediately. And I think we just want to dampen that down a bit so it gives the player a bit more opportunity to dictate the battle. So since you've released in early access, what is your, uh, what, what's your first priority from here? Before we released, we had a couple of hundred playtesters play the game. Um, we were going through a period of fixing the bugs that came up and balancing off of their feedback. When you launch, of course, you go from hundreds of players to thousands of players. And, you know, there's nothing like that sort of volume of players to uncover some bugs. I think we've done okay. Like, obviously, some games launch and have a horrendous time with 
um, the the bugs that are in there. Um, but there's still been a couple that we've we've jumped on, and as they come in, we're just fixing those bugs. And next week we're going to be doing a slightly bigger update, which is going to address some of the balancing issues that some players have highlighted. So I think the top one that stood out for me was for new players. Those squid men, when they attack, can be really quite devastating. In the earlier levels, we'll probably just nudge them down slightly so they're not wiping you out very early in the game. We'll probably be in a phase for a couple of weeks, I imagine, where we are taking the community's feedback about the things that they care about the most and the most critical critical bugs and fix those. And then after that, we'll kind of revert back to our, our roadmap, um, which is sort of tackling some of the, the big things that we want in the game. So I kind of wonder what role does the melee combat play and are there plans to extending it? Basically more weapons, like maybe early pistols or knives? Uh, yeah, so boarding is one area I would very much like to spend some time improving. It can be too hectic. It doesn't feel like there's as much choice in terms of what you can do and a strategy there. It's just kind of everybody pile in and wipe out one person at a time. Um, so there's definitely things I'd like to improve there. Funnily enough, that came up a lot in play testing. This is a big thing that you know we, we really need to fix in early access. But it hasn't come up as much as I thought it would in the community, which I, I found interesting. But it's definitely something I'd like to address. So let's talk about strategy and tactics while you're actually in combat. What are your plans to make the combat itself feel more strategic and tactical versus just a battle of attrition until one ship sinks? I think there's two areas that affect that. There's the messaging of the UI and communicating to the player what's happening. Um, there's definitely improvements that can be made there. Because um, a lot of the time, and, and we've, we've found this ourselves throughout the development, is that we'll have stuff going on, but unless you clearly message that to the player, they, they can't read it as well. Um, so actually, as, as we've gone through development so far, we've kind of, uh, we've made it more gamey in terms of uh, more UI elements to, to communicate this stuff to, to the player. I think there's some systemic things we can do. I want to make it much more of a viable strategy to be someone that sits back and targets things and a viable strategy. Because um, at the moment, if you are very quick and very aggressive that can and move towards the enemy, that can um, bear greater fruit than if you sit back and trade blows. So yeah, I'd like to tackle that from... Of, you know, a couple of angles. So right now we have basically two options um, in the fight. We can stay and fight or we can run away. Are there more options planned? Enemy don't surrender yet. The enemy can flee as well. It's not, again, that's not messaged clearly enough for my liking. Probably doesn't happen enough. It's quite rare for it to happen. If you flee every battle... And again, there's some things I'd like to... That's a that's a fine balance to achieve because on the one hand, if the player's getting pummeled, you want them to be able to escape. Um, but at the same time, you don't want them to be able to escape all the time, every time. Um, so that's slightly tricky to balance that one. In the kind of where this ties into the exploration mode is that we'll probably change it so that if you flee, the event is still there and it doesn't get counted as you've passed it so if there's loads of events in a map you can go okay well that one was quite a tough ship so i'm not going to go back to that one because i'm quite weak i'll find some other events instead or if you're in a position where you're like i have to do that event so i can progress through the uh through the game then you know maybe you're going to have to go find a port to heal up first and prepare yourself a bit better or you know you might just have to go for it and you know winner takes all sort of thing so from here forward, what are your future plans? Uh, yeah, so once once we've kind of gone through that phase of, um, you know, making sure the critical bugs are fixed and addressing the kind of highest concerns from the community, we'll revert back to our development on the roadmap. There's tons of things I'd like to do. And again, this is why we wanted to go through early access because um, I feel a lot of this stuff is really important to develop with the community and see how they feel about our vision and where we are heading. So I'd really like to expand on the gameplay of exploration mode. 
I mean, I see that as being quite a big and ongoing task throughout early access. That I've found that with making a systemic game like this, quite often um, we found this with combat. We were like, oh, you know, combat's getting there, it's getting there, it's getting there. And then suddenly you just have the right amount of features and content in there that it clicks. And we definitely want to put more in because that just enriches the experience. But I definitely want to spend quite a bit of time doing that with exploration mode. And I've got quite a lot of ideas of what I'd like to do for that. Um, which I think will work quite well. I also want to, and I guess this partly ties into exploration mode, is that uh, we plant seeds of this in some of the the text messages that are in the game. But I want some of your choices to feed back so that they might affect you later on. So some of the times where you're like, oh, there's a ship in trouble, I'll leave it in case it's a trap or whatever. Maybe later on, if you're in trouble, that event that you did will seed a, a kind of an outcome later on. That ship might appear and go, well, actually, you didn't help me, so I'm not going to help you this time. See ya. I definitely want to expand the amount of incidental events. We want to have more involved side quests as well. And that will tie in with as we unlock new regions, we'll kind of have lots of um, involved side quests and other kind of environmental modifiers that, that fit into those. Um, it's definitely more weapons and upgrades we'd like to do, uh, more ships coming as well. And also want to, the player can sometimes get into a negative spiral where it's too hard to then break out of that. Um, and it can then feel like the game's being unfair on you. And I definitely want to have the player go well, that, that, that was my choice as to why the bad things happened, not the game's choice. Because the game's, the main story's um, quite long, I, um, some players love permadeath and others just want to play through the story. So, and personally, I don't want to play through 10 hours of story and die and have my save wiped. Like I say, some players love that, but we will have um, other options to... I don't know if you remember the ink ribbon system in the first Resident Evil. Basically, it gave you finite saves. So if we scattered these around the world, that'd be quite a good thing to find. And then it's player choice as to when you save, because mm -hmm. you don't want to splurge them all up front, because then you might have to go through long periods of the game later without having them. Um, I quite like that because there's the rest of the main story to come as well. I um, want to add greater customization options. There's some logistical things like Steam achievements and cloud saves and uh, translations as well is something we'd like to, to add to the game. So I really like this idea of, of what I'm calling abandoned ship stories. And that is uh, a kind of my example I'm using is, hey, we unlocked this new region and hey, maybe it's got this uh, cool island, which is an actual island that we'll add to the game called Spider Island. It's basically a huge island with spider webs all over it. And ships get trapped and, and uh, that sort of gameplay happens. There's some interesting stuff there. We can tell some interesting stories of that. So I'm thinking, why not have a little standalone story um, that you can access off of the main menu, compartmentalized, and, and you can have your fun. Right, cool, I've, I've I've tried that new content, it was awesome. And for those players that do want to go through the whole game and experience it that way, they, they have that too. So I quite like that idea because we can have a lot of fun with it. Um, there's some things we can try that we wouldn't necessarily try in the main game. Um, so, you know, the, the main story is about this cult, or whatever. Maybe we have a story, you're a cultist climbing up the ranks and you're getting to control these horrible squid people for a change. Maybe we let you have a go at playing as the Kraken you know, that that to me sounds like fun. That's kind of what I want for, for early access. I don't want it to just be a traditional early access process. I want it to be something that the community can get excited about. Oh, cool, there's this thing coming. We already do this. Uh, we've done this at a small scale already in the game where we have a combat campaign, which is a completely separate story from the main game. But we put that in there because it offers something slightly different from the main game. That's kind of what I want for these stories. You know, smaller bits of gameplay, you can go in, have a great time. They offer something slightly different from the main game. In a, in a nutshell, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> I wonder if there's mod support planned. I would love to do mod support. Mm -hmm. The engine we're using, which is Unity, is not particularly friendly with offering mod support out of the box. Um, mm -hmm. It would require a lot of work to achieve that. So I think it is really beyond the scope of early access, but um, after we do full release, it yeah. is something I would like to go back and look at because with this sort of game, I just know what the community could do with it once they get their hands on it. So I'd like to enable that. Things like mod support, multiplayer, they're all things we kind of went, that's gonna be beyond scope of what we can achieve. So, um, but yeah, I'd love to, love to at some point, 
revisit the mod support. Thing. So we're pretty much done with questions here. So this is cl us closing down. So here's the opportunity for you to shout out yourself and tell people where they can find the game, Fireblade Software, and your work. Cool. Okay. So, um, well, thank you for, for having me. And um, it's great speaking with you guys. People listening like the sound of what um, Abandoned Ship is like, then please check it out. It's on Steam right now in early access. We really want you to get involved. If you want your name in the game, you can do that by heading to our website and signing up to the newsletter. Our website is abandonedshipgame.com. We just want you guys to get involved and uh, help us build a great game. So the only thing left is for me to sign out. For our listeners and viewers, thanks for listening and viewing. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions whatsoever, we have a wonderful comment section under the video. Please feel free to use it. Thanks for watching again. See you next time. Bye.